Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this hour, firefighters rush to save a home on the city's south side overnight. More details just ahead. The number of COVID-19 cases rising in at least 40 states. I'm Inez de Liquatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, there's beautiful downtown San Antonio. It is 79 degrees, dare I say, for July 17th, at least for right now. It's not that bad. Not bad at all. Good morning, everybody. We did make it to Friday. It is July 17th. Yeah, it wasn't as bad out there yesterday. It was actually tolerable. It was. We actually went for a bike ride in did the you? evening. Yeah, and it was nice. <laughs> Sounds like a perfect activity for a day that just wasn't quite as scorching hot. But we did uh, creep up to it. One point just barely touched 101. So and there was still some humidity left over. Uh, I think that's why it's a little more comfortable this morning. The humidity is down ever so slightly, but we will start to see a bit more humidity in the afternoons. Now today's the day that a couple of folks and when I say a couple, I mean a couple are going to be seeing uh, one or two uh, little showers out there, especially off to the east. As far as uh, there we go, temperatures, everybody mid upper 70s around here. Uh, we've got uh, humidity now dew points. We still have 75 in, in Helotus, but overall they are down a degree or two. I mean, it, we're kind of splitting hairs here, but it's uh, it makes a lot of difference, just one degree as far as dew point is concerned. We do have a slight uh, heat index uh, in the uh, kind of upper 70s and some low 80s around here. Mold is on the low side this morning and uh, 90 at noon, 98 for a high temperature. Southerly wind at uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. One or two of those showers primarily off to the east later on today. Weekend forecast is coming up and maybe a shower to at least the chance way down the road. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Hey, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. All right, a lot of construction in one accident that we have already. This accident is going to be on the 1020 block of Division Avenue near 35, the access road of 35 South. Now, this is a two vehicle accident with one being a rollover. It is in the neighborhood streets, and hopefully that will get cleared up soon. Construction wise, eastbound West Loop 1604 North from Bandera to Hausman is completely shut down. That's including the access ramps from the access road all the way to Hausman. If you want to get on 1604, you're going to have to get on from Kyle's Seal, but you're going to take the access road from Bandera to Hausman. Hopefully, this gets cleared up as well. All right, drive times eastbound 151 to 1604 to 98 minutes, and 90 eastbound to 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. So good times there. And we also have some construction at 10 at the rim. Yesterday this was cleared up though at around 530. Hopefully they do the same today. All right, Mark Stephanie back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, firefighters were able to quickly respond to a fire on the city's south side last night that could have got much worse. Happened in the 11,000 block of Apple White Road near South Sarzamora. Around 1030 PM, firefighters arrived to find a shed on fire next to a trailer home. They were able to keep the fire mostly contained to the shed and everyone in the home managed to get out safely. Our investigators were called in to figure out a cause. We're told the damage is estimated to be about $9,000. More than 5,000 additional cases in Bear County bring the confirmed total of cases to more than 27,000. But that number is not coming from a 24 hour period. Most of them are a result of a two week backlog from the state run testing sites. Here's a look at it. Just the new cases from the latest report, which is 691. Hospitalizations are down right now. 1,202 people are in the hospital, 430 are in the ICU and 277 on ventilators. 46% of ventilators are available and 12% of staffed hospital beds are available. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg says the backlogs the result of what he describes as a kink in the communication process with the state. The mayor says these cases were basically going into a separate filing system from the normal daily totals. However, he assures us the patients who tested positive were notified within four days like usual. Meanwhile, the state's health department removed more than 3,400 cases from its COVID-19 dashboard. The cases are labeled probable not because they're not confirmed cases, but because of the type of test. Metro Health says the people who take an antigen test are labeled probable cases. The tests are done with a mouth swab and are highly accurate if you're showing symptoms. The mayor says he is still not happy about how the data is being portrayed. You have COVID. 
you should be counted. And the fact that we have some folks at the state and federal level who are questioning whether or not we should count that test makes it seem like some folks want, or some people at the state and federal level are trying to suppress uh, just how bad this COVID pandemic is. Dr. Ruth Berggren, an infectious disease specialist, says removing those 3,400 cases isn't a big deal. That's because hospitalizations is what she says we should be focusing on. Confirmed cases are from people who took a PCR test, which uses a nasal swab. Metro Health says there was no error in reporting cases. They're just following guidelines from the CDC and the state's Department of State Health Services. Nationwide cases continue to rise in 40 states and July is already the worst month yet for new cases since the pandemic began. ABC's Inez de la Quatera is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, Florida seeing its worst day yet, 156 deaths in just the last day. Miami Hospital is now 95% full. As an ICU nurse, uh, I beg you to take this virus seriously. And the mayor warning. If something is not done to dramatically alter our course, we could be in a, a more dire situation. Texas also seeing its deadliest day, the virus taking the life of Annalise Long, a 47-year-old mother of triplets. And that was the hardest thing. It's a, she, she gave it her all. And in Arizona, officials ordering refrigerated trucks as they run out of room in morgues. Deaths climbing in 27 states as nearly half the country either pauses or reverses reopening. The nation's top infectious disease expert telling Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg that the U.S. is a mixed bag right now, with some areas doing better than others. Dr. Anthony Fauci also with a warning to younger people causing the spread. That you have to have responsibility for yourself that you're getting infected is not just you in a vacuum you're propagating a pandemic this as the debate over masks continues the governors of colorado and arkansas who both previously opposed statewide mask orders are now reversing course but Georgia's governor banning those efforts and now suing the mayor of Atlanta for requiring people in her city to wear masks. What the scientists are telling us is that the right thing to do is to wear a mask. I'll put our policies up against anyone's any day of the week. And now major retailers like Target, CVS, and Walgreens are joining Walmart, Kroger's, and Kohl's in requiring customers to wear face masks in all their stores. In de la Quatera, ABC News. Washington. San Antonio police need your help locating this man, 72-year-old Charles Robles. Police say he was last seen on Storywood Drive on the north side near West Avenue. Robles has a medical condition that requires a doctor's care. If you've seen him or you know where he is located, you need to contact the missing persons unit. That number 210-207-7660. Right now it's 438, 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the U.S. is accusing Russian agents of trying to steal COVID-19 vaccine research. We're going to have a first look at the so-called vaccine spy game. Plus, suspects of the Ahmad Arbery shooting are expected in court later today. We have a preview ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam, a nice 79 degrees for now. I will enjoy that. Maybe we'll step out in the break. But we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for your weekend. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Any morning headlines. A strong earthquake has struck the coastal Papua New Guinea. U.S. Geological Survey says the 7.0 magnitude quake struck north northwest of Papua New Guinea. It was about 50 miles deep. The U.S. Pacific Tsunami Warning Center said the magnitude was a stronger 7.3. The warning center says that hazardous tsunami was possible within 200 miles of the epicenter, which would include eastern coastal areas of that country. The three suspects in the death of Ahmad Arbery are scheduled to appear before a judge in Georgia later today. Greg McMichael, Travis McMichael, and William Roddy Bryan were indicted in June by a grand jury on several charges, including malice and murder. They were arrested more than 70 days after the death of Arbery. The McMichaels are accused of shooting the 25-year-old while he was out jogging. And Bryan recorded the incident on his cell phone. Attorneys say all three men will be present for the arraignment hearing via webcam. They are expected to plead not guilty.
A federal judge in California has granted an extension this week's deadline for releasing migrant children from federal family detention. In late June, a district court judge called for the swift removal of migrant children who are at one of three family detention centers and set the deadline for today. With the date quickly approaching, the administration asked for the deadline to be extended July 27th, and the judge agreed. The families are detained in three facilities run by ICE. That includes Berks in Pennsylvania, Dilly in, here in South Texas, and a facility southwest of San Antonio in Carnes County. Children at the facilities range in age from 1 to 17 years old. Time now, 443 and 79 degrees. Still ahead, need something to watch this weekend new? We'll take a look at the top three shows streaming on Netflix right now. And next, if your student is trying to find funding for college and your family has been financially affected by the pandemic, we're going to show you how you can still get some help. In this morning's GMA First Look, vaccine spy games. American, Canadian and British governments are accusing Russia of spying on vaccine researchers. They are accused of trying to steal intellectual property trade secrets. The NSA identifying the espionage group known as Cozy Bear as trying to hack pharmaceutical companies and other researchers working on a COVID vaccine. The group suspected of having ties to Russian intelligence was believed to be behind the hacking of the Democratic Party servers during the 2016 election, though the Kremlin did denies any involvement. Russia has ne neither the technological advancement, capacity or money to spend on developing vaccines, so they're looking to steal their way to first place. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on how the government is responding to this vaccine espionage, plus a closer look at where drug makers currently stand in the race to stop the coronavirus. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. 446, the college money crunch as schools tweak their plans for the fall semester. Many students' finances have been upended by the pandemic. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris looks at how to get more financial aid even if the deadlines have passed. John Emanuel was weighing his college offers and financial aid packages this spring. Then his mom lost her job. And it's unfortunate because it affects him, the student. You know, the person who's worked hard for four years to go to your school, and now the final decision is based on whether mom can afford to pay for it or not. If your family was financially affected by the pandemic, you can appeal a financial aid offer, even if you've already accepted a package. My mother ended up getting laid off. It's something that we could use as a as a reason to get more aid. Consumer reports suggest you contact the financial aid office and ask them to consider new information and adjust your award. You can also ask about emergency grants from your school. Enrolled college students who receive federal financial aid who were affected by the pandemic may be eligible for help through the coronavirus relief package. Using federal relief and its own cost savings, the Alamo College's district directed $16 million to students for scholarships, rent, even groceries. We know that these are difficult times. We know that they want to get a credential, and so we want to support them um, on that path. If you still need a student loan, federally backed loans have record low interest rates and payment plans are more flexible than private loans. As for John, he worked it out and will attend Fordham University this fall. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Right now it's 448. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Nick Solis. How's it looking right now? Looking good, Stephanie. No accidents on the highways. Just dealing with one accident right now. That's that same accident here on Division Avenue. Hopefully they can get this cleared up soon. Looks like it's a two vehicle accident where one was rolled over. It's been active for about 50 minutes now, so I'm sure it's going to get cleared up soon. Construction eastbound West Loop 1604 North from Bandera to Hausman is completely shut down right now due to construction. If you need to get back on the highway, you're going to have to exit uh, the access road right before Bandera. Go all the way down that eastbound access road until Kyle Sill and get back on the highway that way. All right, let's take a look at some more construction. This is 151 in Loop 410. We had this construction yesterday and it's actually blocked off that exit ramp to Marbach. I haven't heard anything on Transguide that says that that exit ramp is blocked off again. However, there is some construction there, so just keep that in mind. And yesterday it was done around 6 a.m. Okay, good deal. Something else to keep in mind. I've talked to friends this week, Mike, here in San Antonio, that as the day's gone on, they've become a little more sluggish, fatigued, getting the headaches, and most of the cases, dehydration. Yeah, you, you don't wait. All the experts say don't wait until you're thirsty because that's too late and you have to, you know, kind of keep up with it all the time as far as uh, the 
before you go outside to cut the grass and all that. Right. Make sure you're just constantly hydrated. It's good for you anyway, I guess. I mean, it's a good habit. Oh yeah, it's yeah, really it's good drink, for you. We we drink. as a, by and large as a society, we don't drink enough water. You're supposed to drink what? Like eight uh, glasses a day. Steph yeah. said 15 gallons a day. <laughs> yeah. Eight well, glasses, I eight glasses. Yeah, eight, eight I drink a lot of water just because uh, I like to run, and I don't yeah. want to drink it all like after I run. I want to prepare my my body for my run, and it, it helps. So that's the smart yeah. plan. Yeah. 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 That and, and plenty of uh, sunscreen too. Oh, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, beautiful picture, and somebody was waiting to get catch a glimpse of the uh, Neowise comet, which is visible just after sunset in the northwestern sky and obviously the sun hadn't gone down completely yet and a couple of clouds out there may have one or two clouds hanging around uh, this evening but uh, should be fairly decent uh, for the next couple of evenings to try and catch a glimpse of that and right now it actually looks a little bit better this picture does compared to uh, yesterday Temperatures are basically the same as what they were yesterday, but actually dew points are down about a degree or two. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it does make a lot of difference when you're talking about the amount of humidity in there. So we're instead of now granted Lotus. Yeah, you're still very humid out there, but 72 that's a little bit better than where we have been a uh, slight bit of a heat index to deal with obviously and uh, temperatures later on today going to make it into the upper 90s. Yes, we did barely creep up into uh, the triple digits again yesterday 101 and at that point the humidity though was still high uh, and so we had heat index readings that were well up into the kind of 105 uh, 108 range at that time yesterday. We'll still have a little bit of humidity left over so we'll still see those heat index readings getting up into the uh, low hundreds later on today. All right out there in the Gulf of Mexico. First of all, there's the big clockwise rotation, the high, which is still kind of sitting on top of us. But out there in the Gulf, there's this little disturbance. I mean, it's kind of hard to see. However, it is going to throw a few showers in our direction. And as this kind of rolls on throughout the afternoon, we'll have a couple of showers primarily to the east and southeast. And this is not going to be some huge rain event or anything like that, but at least there are going to be a couple of them out there later on this afternoon and maybe even lasting into the kind of early evening hours and perhaps uh, some computer models want to keep one or two around in the early morning hours. Again, this is going to be mainly a, a coastal plain type event as far well, I don't even know if events the right name for it, but a coastal plain as far as a couple of those showers out there, but at least there's going to be a few of them. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And again, one or two of those showers off to the east, southeast, 98 for high temperature today. Over the weekend, we will stay in the mid to upper 90s, um, a little more humidity, so you're going to notice it. And then going into next week, uh, I've got the mention of a shower midweek around here. There's another one of these little disturbances that's going to the overall pattern will continue to kind of ease up a little bit and these little disturbances to give us at least a chance for some rain by next week. So today, eh, next week, maybe a little less. Eh. Yeah, if you're towards Seguin, mm -hmm. further east of there, 20% chance for a shower too. Well, that's nice for those folks it, there. Correct, correct. <laughs> we'll get our turn later. <laughs> 453, 79 degrees. Coming up next, country music star Luke Bryan is celebrating a major milestone in his career along with his birthday today. More details just ahead. Former First Lady Michelle Obama creating a new podcast and country music star Luke Bryan celebrating his birthday in a special way. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. If you watched the Chris Hemsworth movie Extraction on Netflix, you're one of almost 100 million subscribers. The streaming company out with a list of its most watched original movies in their first four weeks of release. Extraction on top with 99 million views. Netflix counts a view as any subscriber who's watched at least two minutes of a film. The Sandra Bullock dystopian thriller Bird Box is second with 89 million views. The Mark Wahlberg action comedy Spencer Confidential is third with 85 million. Jeopardy host Alex Trebek says cancer treatments are leaving him fatigued, but... Feeling great. In fact, during the break from the studio, I even wrote a book that will be coming out July 21st. In an update on his health and the show, he revealed he's been taping some intros for special Jeopardy episodes coming soon, in which they'll open the quiz show's vaults. And he says he can't wait to get back to the studio to start filming the new season, which is supposed to start in September. Former First Lady Michelle Obama wants to have a conversation in podcast form. She's launching a new show, which will focus on relationships between everyone from family members to friends and colleagues. Guests will include her mom, Conan O'Brien, Obama presidential advisor Valerie Jarrett, and more. The Michelle Obama podcast hits Spotify July 29th. One
And it's a pretty good week for Luke Bryan. His single, One Margarita, is number one on the Billboard Country Chart, and today's his birthday. He's 44, while actress and Carrie Fisher's daughter, Billy Lord, is 28. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. We are just getting started here on GMSA. Right now it's 457, 78 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, a man is hit by a vehicle while trying to cross the street on the city's south side overnight. We're going to have the details on his condition. Plus, listen up, Mario fans. The latest in the Paper Mario series released today. We'll have a preview just ahead in Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, a driver crashes into a man trying to cross a busy street on the south side overnight. We have details on the victim's condition. Plus, neighbors are reacting after investigators say a 16-year-old boy was killed when he and a group of other teens were playing with a gun. And outside with live cam, Mike says today is the day for one or two people to see a shower. We're talking just a few raindrops, but hey, it's better than nothing. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is July 17th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And that would be great. One or two people getting a, a shower this morning. And Mike, it, and let's not go crazy. Mm -hmm. I know you don't want to oversell this, but you said it may be as high as 12 people. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so nobody could, at the end of the day goes, you said it was going to rain. No, I didn't know. So um, <laughs> would that know, ever it, happen? Pardon me? Anybody go, I thought you said it was going to rain. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, it's. You know, it's funny because we've been so, so dry for, what, the past six weeks, basically, almost through the entire month of June. We had a little bit of rain uh, back in June. So, yeah, anything is kind of, you know, getting getting things excited. But uh, it's not going to be any sort of a, a huge event. We'll get more on that in a second. 78 degrees right now. Same thing up the road in New Braunfels. The uh, dew point, well, just bumped up a notch from last hour up to 73. So yeah, we do have uh, some humidity out there and uh, this is why we're trying to get excited about anything as far as any rain. Unfortunately, basically none of this is going to fall over the recharge zone, but the aquifer is down 10 day average continues to drop down 657.1 and mold is on the low side right now. Temperatures around the area overall are actually down just a little bit compared to even the past couple of mornings. I know I'm kind of splitting hairs here, but uh, you know, 77 Balverde, uh, 78 at the airport, 76 in Randolph. So yeah, we're you know easing things up uh, slightly. And overall, dew points are slightly lower than where they have been. Again, it's still humid out there, and I'm talking a degree or two, but we'll take anything at this point. A uh, bit of a uh, heat index to deal with as of right now. And again, mold is on the, uh, the low side. So 90 today at noon, 98 for a high temperature. One or two of those showers are going to be popping up off to the east later on today. Again, it's less than a maybe 20% chance for a shower or two, but at least there's going to be a couple of them out there. We'll take a closer look at the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's Officer Nick Salise. Thanks, Mike. All right, still working on that one accident off Division Avenue, the 1020, the 1020 block, I'm sorry, of Division Avenue, right near the access road of 35 South. It's a two vehicle accident, still working on getting that cleared up. All right, we have this construction from 1604 on East, on West Loop 1604 North from Bandera to Hausman. It's completely shut down. You need to go through the access road if you want to get back on eastbound 1604, and you're going to have to take the Kyle Sill ramp there to the main lanes. All right, drive time 1604 West westbound from US 281 to I-10 seven minutes. And if you're 281 southbound from Boulevard to 1604, only five minutes, so really good times there. Taking a look at some construction now, 10 at Hewerman. This is just another part of that I-10 eastbound traffic we've had from Hewerman all the way to the rim. Keep that in mind. It was cleared up by 6 a.m. yesterday. Hopefully it's the same today. All right, everyone, I just hope you have a wonderful morning. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Through this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering after being hit by a car while trying to cross the street. It happened on Poteet Jordanton Freeway near West Villarette, just north of Loop 410. SAPD says the driver of the vehicle was having a problem with his brakes when he hit the 20 year old victim crossing the street. Police say the driver did stop to help. The victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. A 16-year-old boy is dead after investigators say he and a group of other teens were playing with a gun. They say Moses Reyes was shot in the chest in a home on the far west side. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, Reyes was rushed to a nearby hospital after he was shot in the chest in a home off of Lands Pond. The exact cause of the shooting remains under investigation, but Sheriff Javier Salazar says investigators would treat the case as a homicide. 
We educate our children at a young age about a lot of dangerous things, but it's not for them. They do not need to be playing with weapons. The city and county provide free gun locks to gun owners who want them. The programs were launched back in January. Investigators say it's still not clear how the teens got a hold of this gun. The latest COVID-19 report from the city of San Antonio says just over 1,200 people are in the hospital. 430 are in ICU. 277 patients are currently on ventilators. 46-year-old Ernesto Cortez is one of the many battling COVID-19. He started off with a fever, then developed a bad cough, and this morning he's on a ventilator fighting for his life. His family says he couldn't breathe on his own anymore, and the hospital was his only option. Since June 18th, he's been at Baptist downtown. Dr. Paul Hancock with Methodist Healthcare says some COVID-19 patients have a longer stay at the hospital. Hancock says they have seen an increasing number of patients in ICUs and on ventilators. I think that's probably a reflection of the wave we just had, the very high increase in cases. Some of those patients may have been in the hospital for a few days and then now have progressed and have moved into ICU level of care and, and on ventilators. Everybody loves him. We miss him. Ernesto's family says they don't know how or where he contracted COVID-19. Both Northside ISD and Northeast ISD announcing they will delay in-person class for the upcoming school year. Both districts instead will do distance learning for students during that time. Northside ISD will begin on Monday, August 24th. School officials say there will be no in-person classes until at least after Labor Day on September 8th. Northeast ISD school year is set for August 17th. School officials are planning for distance learning for a minimum of the first three weeks of school. Both districts are still offering meal distributions and assistance with devices or internet services. And when it comes back to school information, we want to help you keep you informed as much as possible. That's why we have created a special back to school page that is available right now at kset.com. You can find tentative start dates for school districts in the San Antonio area, as well as other important information for parents. This combined with our kset kids section can provide you with lots of fun education ideas activities during the upcoming school year, even if you're stuck at home. Meanwhile, San Antonio City officials say area pools and splash pads will remain closed through the rest of the summer. A statement city says keeping the pools and splash pads, splash, splash pads, easy for me to say, closed, just emphasizes how important it is right now to avoid larger gatherings and practice social distancing when outside your home. Via Metropolitan Transit and Mayor Ron Nirenberg have agreed on a plan to use a 1 8 cent sales tax for economic recovery and then permanently shifting it to transportation funding. The details of the plan are still being sorted out right now, but both sides hope to get it on the November 3rd ballot. This compromise settles a long going debate over the future of that 1 8 cent sales tax that currently funds Linear Creek Parkways and the Edwards Aquifer Protection Program. That tax is expected to reach its $180 million cap next year. 508, 78 degrees. Still ahead, birds rescues. Bird rescues. Okay, yes, not birds rescue, but birds rescues are bursting at the seams these days. What you need to know before adopting a fine feathered friend. Back outside with live cam. Yeah, a shower or two to the east of San Antonio. Mike will get you updated and look at the extended forecast where he has now included another small chance at a shower or two. What a 5-11 now to an update on that wreck on Division Avenue that Officer Nick Solis has been talking about. Our Katrina Weber is there live now with that update. Katrina. Well, good morning. We're here in the 1000 block of uh, Division Avenue. This is where police have a situation that's both dangerous and destructive. Now, there are two cars, believe it or not, in this uh, pile that you see behind me with the pole sort of going right through the middle. Police believe that the drivers of these two car cars may have been speeding down the road and then they caused a pass path of destruction as they lost control. You can see the power pole that they took down there. There's another one just here down the street along with two more vehicles that were parked in front of a home and were uh, damaged by those two cars as they came by. It seems that they must have hit a bump in the road, according to police. They lost control, took out an SUV and a pickup in the driveway of the home, knocked down those power poles and power lines, and then came right here to this power pole uh, where they crashed. And right now, uh, we have CPS Energy on scene. We have some lines that are dangling that police have uh, cordoned off. 
and CPS Energy is going around. We believe that the power is of these homes. Police for the drivers of vehicles that they said those were able to out of that wreckage, run away. Well, uh, neighborhood definitely instead uh, a mess to, as the result. All right, I think we're having a problem with their live view backpack or perhaps some uh, batteries for the microphone. But thank you, Katrina. Got it for the most part. I you knew you'll keep us updated. 513, dogs, cats, and fish are the top three pets people keep in the U.S. Number four is birds. Surprisingly, more than 20 million people have a fine feathered friend in their home. So it's not surprising that birds have become one of the fastest growing groups of unwanted pets, though. A few animal shelters have the capacity or the knowledge to take care of them. But some are trying to help. Our Max Massey has that story. Small, big, beautiful, bald. Ellen Sherman has connected with thousands that have flown through her parrot rescue over the past 20 years. This is Maya. Maya is full of herself. She's... Right now, Ellen's caring for more than 200 parrots, cockatoos, and macaws. Gator came and believe it or not, more pluck than this. Big is over 65 years old. They didn't want her anymore because she didn't talk. Unicorn had her beak ripped out by a mating male. She's good. She, she learned how to eat. The traits that make parrots so intriguing are the same ones that make them extremely difficult to live with. First off, parrots are loud, they bite, they're messy, they're active, and those large ones that everyone loves, they can live up to 80 years. That's why when someone comes to adopt one, they go through a rigorous adoption process. She's feisty and lovable. Deborah Librant adopted her macaw just a few years ago. She's making sure that the bird's needs are taken care of. Think of it as having a two-year-old for life. If you think about all the needs of a toddler. Those constant demands keeps Ellen and her volunteer crew of eight very busy. Although they grow what they can, food costs can run up to $2,000 a month. And Ellen fears her rescue will get busier if the economy forces more people to give up their birds. But Ellen says as long as there's a need, she will find a way. When's the last time I've had a day off? 20-some years ago. <laughs> and Ellen wouldn't have it any other way. Hi, four. Oh, yes. Another concern for Ellen, fake avian sanctuaries are popping up breeding warehouses full of exotic birds to sell over the internet and private individuals who pose as rescue just to turn and sell the birds. Ellen's Parrot Rescue and Sanctuary is a registered 501c3 nonprofit. She funds 75% of the cost herself. Donations cover the last 25%. And during this pandemic, she has done all of the work herself. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 515, 78 degrees. And coming up next, a look at how a new partnership between DoorDash and Walgreens could soon deliver some medications right to your door. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In today's Tech Bites, DoorDash expanding its delivery options. It's starting a new partnership with Walgreens to deliver over-the-counter medications and other products. The service is starting in the Chicago, Atlanta, and Denver areas before expanding to other markets. Facebook is now adding labels to post about voting from federal officials and candidates. The label directs users to an official government website with voting information. It will appear on posts regardless of whether they contain false statements. Finally, the new paper market 
Mario game, The Origami King, is released today. Critics give it mostly high marks for its graphics and gameplay. The idea is for Paper Mario to collect coins and other items while solving puzzles and defeating enemies. It's played on the Nintendo Switch console. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Well, that's different. Yeah, I like that little paper emo uh, not emoji, cartoon character. The, the yeah. character, yeah. 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 Does cute. your hubby play those games? <laughs> you know, uh, not as much. Yeah. When, um, now, that, now that we have a little one, a six-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when we were all younger, right? <laughs> you know, back in the day. <laughs> Let's check with Officer Nick Salise, see how things are looking out there. When you're, you're tracking that one incident for sure, Nick. Yeah, definitely, Mark. And we also have another accident now, more north. It's going to be eastbound North Loop 1604 East at Green Mountain Road. Now, this accident just came out here about three minutes ago. Still trying to get more details about it. Just know it is on the eastbound main lanes, and the SAPD is responding. All right, this is the accident we've been talking about all morning that Katrina's at. Hopefully, they get that cleared soon. The 1020 block of Division Avenue. Uh, the construction looks like uh, they're starting to open up 1604. I did see a little blockage there right at Bandera. It looks like like the access roads block now, but I'll get you more information on that too and talk to my friends at Transguide about this one. All right, let's take a look outside of the Transguide. Tenant Human, there's some construction there. Uh, 10 at the rim, eastbound. This call construction is eastbound I 10 from Human to the rim to 1604, 281 at Winding Way. That's looking good. Traffic flowing very smoothly there. And 1604 at Babcock. Look at that. Looks great. Nick. Thank you, Nick. And uh, look, there's nothing really different to when you step outside this morning. Uh, feels the same, looks the same. Temperatures are in the uh, you know mid upper 70s, uh, some uh, mid 70s in the hill country. Dew point temperatures, yeah, we're still up in the low 70s, but overall they are down maybe a degree or two compared to the past couple of days in the morning hours. So this is, I mean, it's not, it's still humid out there, but you know, one or two degrees will take anything we can uh, we can get, obviously. There's still somewhat of a heat index right now, uh, low to some mid 80s. And uh, high temperatures later on today are going to make it into the upper 90s. Uh, we did barely touch 101 yesterday afternoon, just after uh, 4 o'clock, but we still had a lot of humidity left over, so it was a lot different than the previous few days. Uh, at one point, the heat index was about 107, 108 here in town when we hit 101 on the uh, thermometer uh, heat index readings. Yes, we will have in the low hundreds again later on today because again, the humidity is going to stick around somewhat. So first of all, there's the big clockwise rotation water vapor imagery. Um, you can see that high, which is sitting right there. However, off to the east of us, that's what we've been watching. This little, I mean, it, it's not much out there. Just a very, very small disturbance, which is actually uh, producing a couple of showers well out in the Gulf of Mexico. And again, don't get your hopes really, really high for this. Um, it will continue to work its way on inland throughout the day. And uh, computer models do have a couple of showers developing, especially well off to the east. And in some of our eastern counties, better chance of rain. Uh, Victoria, maybe Beeville, Gonzales. A couple of them will continue to try and work their way further uh, to the west, but rain chances are probably about 20% at best east of I-35. I even doubt if we see anything here in town, but at least there will be a couple of showers around here. Temperatures will be in the upper 90s, and as it's looking at least here in town, a little different little different situation toward the Rio Grande Valley, but we won't see any more uh, triple digit temperatures. Heat index readings, that's a different story though, because the humidity is definitely going to be out there. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And again, one or two showers off to the east are possible today. Don't get your hopes too high. 98 high temperature and we'll stay in the uh, upper 90s, mid to upper 90s. Tomorrow uh, looks like we may see uh, just a bit of a drop. Uh, 96 veritable cold snap there and we stay about 97 degrees. So just a couple of degrees above normal right now. All this has hold true all week long, forecast-wise, the, the, the downward trend. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, we stay more consistent, nothing too extreme, and then even a couple of showers by midweek next week. Yeah, we appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. 523, 78 degrees. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, One Direction fans are counting down the days to next Thursday. We'll tell you why. 526, welcome back. Staff, relax. It's not a reunion, but a popular boy band promises new material. Here's CNN's David Daniel with more music news in the Hollywood Minute. You and me got a whole lot of history. 
One Direction fans are counting down to next Thursday, July 23rd. It's the On Hiatus boy band's 10th anniversary, and the group is promising a new website with new content, including interactive playlists, rare songs, remixes, live recordings, even a celebration video made especially for their fans. So you're running from them. I'm helping you run away. Dirt Music, debuting on demand this weekend, is based on the acclaimed Australian novel. It's set in Western Australia, where Garrett Hedlund's character Lou tries to get as far from civilization as possible. Director Gregor Jordan, currently quarantining in New Zealand, says that's just where they filmed, on the massive state's remote northwest coast. We literally, you know, went from Perth to a place called Broome, which is about a three-hour plane ride north of Perth, and then from there we got in four-wheel drives and drove for, you know, 200 miles along a dirt road. I already felt like a ghost. Figured why not become one. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. He sounded, oh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the guy. He sounded exhausted, the actor. <laughs> it took him a long time. To, are, you, are you looking at me that way because of Harry Styles? No, I'm just waiting to hear what you had to say about either one. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> you a Harry Styles fan? I, I guess, a little bit. Look at you, you're smitten. 528, 78 degrees. And still ahead, the battle over wearing masks continues as many fight back against, against CDC recommendations. The six-year-old boy getting high praise from all over the world, even from celebrities, after saving his sister from a vicious dog attack. Good morning to you. Hope you slept well last night. Uh, right now, it is Friday. It is July 17th. And even if you didn't sleep well, I'm sure you're excited. It's Friday. We're very excited here. Yay! That's why we're all smiling. <laughs> and Mike has some relatively good news this morning. Yeah, we do have today's day. We've been talking about a couple of showers are going to be popping up around the area. Not anything, not a big deal. So again, don't get really excited about this, but at least it's something different than seeing triple digit temperatures. Uh, we're starting off about where we've been the past couple of days, mid uh, uh, upper 70s around the area. The humidity dew point temperatures. Now, Helotus is at 75 and that's wet towel kind of humidity, but elsewhere, I mean, we are down maybe a degree or two um, kind of across the board. So it's a little, little bit uh, more tolerable when you step outside. Mold is on the low side and uh, throughout the rest of today, cloudy, warm this morning, partly cloudy, going for 98 for a high temperature. Again, a couple of those showers off to the east later on today, maybe a 20% chance. There's a little disturbance that we've been talking about on the Gulf and that's going to be working its way uh, inland. Uh, they're going to be, like I said, few and far between mid upper 90s over the weekend, partly cloudy skies and then upper 90s uh, next week. And we have another little disturbance, not any big deal, but another little disturbance that's going to be sliding on in here from the Gulf of Mexico. So maybe a shower or two by the middle of next week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. I know there's big, a couple of big ones working this morning, right, Nick? Yeah, definitely, Mike. Especially uh, now we had that major accident on Green Mountain 1604. But I wanted to give you an update here on uh, this construction. It looks like uh, TransGuide stated that they are now opening up Bandera or 1604 from Bandera to Hausman. Cleanup crews are on the shoulder right now picking up those barricades. So good news there. This should be open anytime. This accident here, uh, fairly new, eastbound North Loop 1604 East at Green Mountain Road. Now, this is actually on the Axis Road of 1604 at the intersection of Green Mountain. Looks like two wreckers are on scene already, and this one should be getting cleared up hopefully in the next 10 to 15 minutes. All right, this accident we've had all morning. This is going to be a major accident on the 1020 block of Division Avenue involving two vehicles. Now, for more details on this accident, let's go to Katrina Weber, who is live on the scene. Well, good morning, Nick. Uh, we do have a lot, big mess here in the 1000 block of division. We have uh, wrecked cars, power poles down, power lines down, even a house that's been damaged all by these two vehicles you see behind me. Believe it or not, there are two in this wreckage. We have a pickup and a sedan that have both crashed uh, into multiple things here in the 1000 block of division. Now, police believe that the drivers of those two vehicles were speeding. When you look at this wreckage, it looks as though they have to be seriously hurt. But a neighbor told me she came out here within just a couple of minutes and both of those drivers had already run away from the scene. Now, along this block, there's a trail of destruction. Uh, after they lost control, they hit two other vehicles that were parked in front of a house. You can see power poles leaning down, power lines dangling. 
Fortunately, CPS Energy is here addressing all of the danger of the situation. But uh, those two cars then kept going and uh, ended up where they landed. Now, the pickup, which is the vehicle uh, to the left of your screen, that actually hit the house. And according to police, there's a hole in the house as a result of that. So again, a lot of mess here, a lot of destruction caused. And uh, we do have CPS Energy addressing at least the power lines that are down and the power outages that have been caused as a result of this wreck this morning, a wreck that police are attributing to racing on the part of these drivers. Reporting live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Huge accident scene. Katrina, thank you very much. The U.S. saw more than 75,000 new confirmed coronavirus cases Thursday. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, that sets another single day record for the country. In San Antonio, refrigerated trailers being used as temporary morgues. That's because hospitals there are overwhelmed with COVID-19 victims. We go home and we cry. We're exhausted emotionally. Texas among the many states seeing a surge in hospitalizations after restrictions eased. Before we opened up, uh, we had eight people in the hospital. Now we have 800. Uh, we had uh, four ICU patients. Now we have 211. More than three dozen states are seeing a hike in week-to-week -week new cases, according to Johns Hopkins University. We thought we might have reached a plateau, and now we're climbing a very steep mountain at a rate which is frightening to all of us. Meanwhile, President Trump remains focused on having students back in their schools this year. When he says open, he means open and full, kids being able to attend each and every day at their school. But multiple health experts say that's a recipe for failure unless Americans work together to curb the infection rate. If you open schools in communities where you have a lot of COVID spreading, you're going to have to slam them shut again. Look at what happened in Arizona, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida. You open too soon, it's one step forward and many steps backward. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, it looks like the Democratic National Convention has officially moved online. The event was slated to take place the week of August 17th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In a statement, the DNC said the convention, including the voting period, will instead take place remotely. Former Vice President Joe Biden was set to accept the party's nomination during the big gathering. The Biden campaign says he will still deliver an acceptance speech in Milwaukee, and his vice presidential pick will do the same on an earlier night. Time now, 536 and 78 degrees. Still ahead, a boy saving his sister from a dog attack, now getting some high praise from some big time superheroes like Captain America and Spider-Man. Also next, how some Americans are going to the extreme to fight back against wearing masks, despite recommendations by federal health officials. Outside with live cam, yeah, a stray shower or two is possible. Mike will tell you where today, and we'll look ahead to the holiday, not the holiday weekend, just a weekend, just a normal we're, weekend. We're still excited. Yeah, we are. We'll be right back. Just about 540, the heated debate over wearing masks continues to grow across the country. Just this week, the head of the CDC said if we all wear masks, we could have this under control in a matter of weeks. But as ABC's Marcus Moore reports, there is pushback in several states across the country. Emotions running high at this meeting over masks in schools. This is the exact opposite of what we need to be doing. We are supposed to be physically distancing, wearing masks. Anti-mask protesters erupting in booths. The Utah County Commission suspending the meeting before debate could even begin. I think it's a political hoax and I am against the masks. Since when do we have a constitutional right to put other people's lives in danger? We can't smoke in public places. Police arresting this Louisiana man accused of backing his car into an officer after refusing to wear a mask in a Walmart. A fierce debate in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the city passing a mandatory mask ordinance. My rights are civil rights. Don't be stupid. Do what you're supposed to do to help your family, your friends and other people. Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt becoming the first governor to test positive for COVID on Tuesday, the same day he was seen in a meeting without a mask, Stitt refusing to issue a statewide order. How do you enforce it? Are we going to put people in jail? The governors of Colorado and Arkansas, who both previously opposed statewide mask orders, now reversing course. Alabama's Governor Kay Ivey also initially resisting mask and stay-at-home orders, saying this just two weeks ago. You know, you shouldn't have to order somebody to do what is just in your own best interest. 
But with the state setting a record for hospitalizations on Wednesday, the governor now issuing a statewide mask order. The numbers and the data over the past few weeks are definitely trending in the wrong direction. As Texas hit a record number of daily deaths, the governor now pleading with residents to follow his mask order issued two weeks ago. There's only one thing that can slow the spread, and that is by people adopting the use of wearing a face guard of some sort. That was ABC's Marcus Moore reporting. Time now is 542 and 78 degrees for now. Up next, how some celebrities are reacting to the heroic actions of this six-year-old boy who saved his sister's life. 544, welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. We don't know yet if it's finger looking good, but KFC is launching a new meal vegetarians might like. The chain has a plant-based version of its fried chicken. The faux chicken will be tested in a few dozen areas, including LA and San Diego. KFC will see rather will analyze the test results and then determine if the plant based food will eventually be available nationally. Other companies, including Burger King, Dunkin and Starbucks, have plant based meals. T-Mobile is taking on robocalls. The company's latest endeavor is called Scam Shield. This product gives its customers comprehensive protection from scammers. Scam Shield will be free for T-Mobile, Metro by T-Mobile, and Sprint customers. It's scheduled to be available on August 2nd. Now to a story of heroism. A six-year-old boy who went above and beyond the call of duty to save his sister from an attack. Here's ABC's David Muir with that story. Six-year-old Bridger Walker has always looked out for his little sister. They were at a friend's house last week when a dog charged at his sister. Bridger protected her. He told his family, I stepped to the side in front of my sister so that the dog wouldn't get her. I kept moving so it couldn't get past. They say the dog jumped at them and got a hold of Bridger's cheek. Bridger was rushed to the ER, a two-hour procedure, 90 stitches. But he is okay, and his little sister is unharmed. His parents saying Bridger told them, I always wanted to ride in an ambulance, but not like this. Maybe I can ride home in one too. So many have been moved by Bridger's bravery. The little superhero has been recovering at home in his superhero outfits. Tonight, actor Tom Holland, who plays Spider-Man, talking to Bridger, dressed as Spider-Man. You are so brave, mate. And we are all so proud of you. And Bridger in his Captain America uniform, too. Hearing from the other Captain America, actor Chris Evans. This is a message for Bridger. Hey, Bridger. Captain America here. How you doing, buddy? Wow, you're a hero. What you did was so brave, so selfless. Your sister is so lucky to have you as a big brother. Your parents must be so proud of you. And tonight, Bridger and his family have a new message for the superheroes who reached out to Bridger and to everyone who has written to them. We are so appreciative of all the kind words, love and prayers, they said. And they've now asked that donations be made to charities, including the Wounded Warrior Project, to help the heroes on the front lines as their little superhero gets better right by his sister's side. David Muir reporting, there's a new little superhero walking the streets of Cheyenne, Wyoming. That's right, a true superhero, Bridger. Wow, and what a relationship with his little sister. It's a bond that'll never be broken. Let's check traffic right now with Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, Mark, right now things are looking good all around the city. We have a couple of accidents, but for the most part, a lot of green on the screen there. All right, still dealing with this accident eastbound North Loop 1604 East at Green Mountain Road. Now, this accident is on the Axis Road there, and it is a, a two-car accident. Hopefully, it get cleared up soon. Uh, this accident we've been talking about all morning as a 1020 block of Division Avenue involving two vehicles that are overturned. Uh, uh, I know Katrina Weber gave you all details on that earlier. Still active there. And uh, Trans Guide 151 at 410, a little bit of construction there. Not too bad now. Uh, looks like they're going to open that up soon. 35 at Space Center Drive. That's looking great on the northeast side and 410 at Starcrest. A little north of there looking great. Thank you, Nick. Some of us are tempted to drive east today and maybe run into yes. one of these showers. We'd like to be one of the lucky ones. There will be one or two of them out there today. Not many, but uh, you know, just if you, if you get a shower, consider yourself fortunate. Um, <laughs> It's not going to be any sort of a drop breaker, unfortunately, and yeah, most will be confined well off to the uh, the east and we're starting off about the same place we've been the past few mornings, obviously mid upper 70s. Normal low temperature is 75 degrees, so we are actually in the ballpark of normal. The humidity 
which, yeah, Helotus is still very, very high with the dew point of 75, but overall, uh, things are down maybe a degree or two with dew point temperatures and, you know, just looking for any little bit of hope here. Uh, we still have obviously a little bit of a, a, a heat index to deal with right now. First of all, I take note on the water vapor imagery. There's the big clockwise rotation. That's the high, which is sitting on top of us and preventing anything from going on, but it is sliding up to the north just enough to allow this tiny disturbance out here in the Gulf of Mexico to move on in. And there are a couple of showers being picked up on radar right now. And I, I again, I don't mean to play this up too much because everything is pretty much going to be confined well off to the east. Uh, computer models do have some of these showers moving on in here by the early afternoon hours and maybe one or two of them trying to get a little further to the east. And if you get a shower today, fantastic. But if you don't, don't be don't be disappointed. Unfortunately, uh, a couple of models do have actually an early morning leftover shower primarily along the coastal plain as well. Now, on top of that, we do have some of the uh, the Saharan dust to still deal with, and it looks like we are going to see a bit more of it coming on in here as the weekend rolls on. But the brunt of it. Um, the latest computer model does have it staying at least to the south and to the uh, kind of the, the west of our area. We will see a little bit more going into the probably late evening hours tomorrow and then into Sunday, but that should pretty much stay off to the uh, west in some of our western counties. It looks like you might be seeing the majority of some of that uh, Saharan dust. So once again, the high, which is the the dominant feature and that's been uh, the cause for all the very hot weather around here is sort of weakening it's easing up a little bit and that's allowing these little disturbances to come on in here and there's another one that wants to kind of slide on in here across the area as we go in toward the middle part of next week and so that is at least going to give us another small chance for a couple of showers again these are not big rain chances at all 90 at noon today partly cloudy skies high temperature up to 98 We'll have enough humidity left over to make it feel like it's in the low hundreds. And then, of course, one or two of those showers off to the east later on today. Weekend, mid 90s. I'm going to call it mid 90s instead of upper 90s. Uh, 96 Saturday, 97 on Sunday and still obviously plenty of humidity. And then uh, we are going to be very consistent. Normal high temperature right now is 95 and then toward the end of the month, we'll start getting in toward 96 for normal high. So really not that hot compared to normal. We will have some humidity around here, maybe a shower middle next week. Just glad to be back in the 90s. I no love kidding. it. Hidden. Sounds a I'm whole with, lot better. I'm with her. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. 551, 78 degrees. And still ahead, Super Mario is back in a new adventure that has him folding against a new villain. We're going to have a closer look next. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, new daily cases of the coronavirus topped 70,000 for the first time. The death toll is also rising in more than half the states reporting that. The Republican governor of Maryland writing a scathing review of President Trump's response to the emergency. He will join us this morning on GMA, so we hope you will too. Hey Mario, our princess is looking a bit different in Paper Mario, the Origami King. Paper Mario has always dealt with the idea that uh, Mario is made out of paper and, and it deals with this two dimensional object, this flat object or this flat character, uh, still you know, connecting and interacting with a 3D world that is crafted for him. So it's always this interesting sense of perspective. In Paper Mario, the Origami King, as the name implies, you are dealing with the Origami King, who is the enemy. He wants to convert this Mario Kingdom world into origami. And you get this helper character that teaches you this new mechanic called the thousand fold arms, which looks like you've got two accordion shaped hands that are coming out of your body and you can move the controller around and interact with objects in the background, which is really cool. Rescuing our princess from another castle in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. More and more people are opting to live happily ever after without a marriage certificate, but that doesn't mean you should opt out of all paperwork. Experts say it's important to have a domestic partnership agreement. Me bind you, uh, what your obligations are going to be, legally, financially, as well as for your kids. 
should also think about things like your house and your car. Coming up at 642 this morning, we'll take a look at some other things that you might want to look out for in this particular situation. Also coming up next on GMSA, firefighters rush to save a house from fire on the south side overnight. More details on if they were successful in saving that family's home. And Officer Nick Solis is back with Time Saver Traffic. The number of COVID-19 cases rising in at least 40 states. I'm Inez de la Guatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Plus, a man was hit on a local highway last night. How San Antonio police say it happened, and what's next for that driver involved? And taking a look outside with a live cam, it is Friday. It is 78 degrees. It's going to be a great day. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It is Friday. It's July 17th. Happy Friday. Thank you for starting. Sorry, there you are. Happy. <laughs> Thank you for starting your morning with us. Oh. Hi. No, hi. Back and forth. Good morning. They're, they're just making sure we're paying attention. <laughs> yes, I am paying attention. Because guess what's going to happen now? We're going to go to that one. And there's Mike Ostrage. You're back now talking about <laughs> a. I was going to hide behind this. Don't, don't <laughs> hide. You know, find you. There's a camera back there. They will find you. And there's cameras all over. <laughs> there are. Um, warm and humid again this morning. Uh, maybe humidity is down just a tinge. We did hit 101 yesterday. We'll stay in the upper 90s today. And a couple of showers are possible off to the east. And again, I, I have to continue to qualify that and say, don't get excited about this at all. Unfortunately, 78 here in town, 75 Randolph Stinson and 70 at Rio Medina. Dew points uh, remain in the low 70s. Yeah, fair amount of humidity out there. Rio Medina is not bad with a 2.67. Mold is on the uh, low side right now. And uh, throughout the day, we are going to see temperatures pretty steady this morning because of the cloud cover and some of that humidity. And then we will make it up to 90 today at noon. We'll have uh, some of these stubborn clouds and a few more clouds kind of hanging around here this afternoon. And again, one or two of those showers are going to be possible well off to the east later on today. We'll show you some of the computer models coming up here in a minute. Temperatures, well, at least uh, for a good chunk of us, we won't be hitting triple digits over the weekend. We'll still have some humidity, though, to deal with, and perhaps another rain chance way down the road. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis, and uh, it's been, there's been a lot going on. I'm seeing another thing popping up. There. Yeah, yeah, just that accident division. I can't believe what's going on there. Down power lines, uh, two rollover vehicles. It's been, we've been dealing with this accident all morning so thank goodness Katrina is there to give us details that accident is still active by the way now this one is too eastbound north loop 1604 east at Green Mountain Road hopefully this can get cleared soon I see wreckers are on scene there this is at the on the intersection of Green Mountain and the access for the 1604 um, that's been active for about 30 minutes now of course this accident still at the 1020 block of Division Avenue hopefully they can get that cleared up fast. All right, drive times eastbound 151 to 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're eastbound 90 from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. Good commute times there. Taking a look at other parts of the city. Looks like the construction at the 10 at the rim is all cleared up now. 281 and winding way flowing smoothly. 1604 and Babcock. Look at those cars go. Things are looking good all around the city. And uh, if you are heading to work, expect a smooth ride. All right, everyone, remember to wear your seatbelt, go the speed limit and get to work safely, please. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. New this morning, a man's recovering in the hospital after San Antonio police say he was hit by a car trying to cross a highway. It happened on Poteet Jurdenton Freeway near West Villarette, just north of Loop 16, or rather north of Loop 410 around 1030 last night. Uh, SAPD says the driver of the vehicle was having problems with his brakes when he hit the 20 year old victim crossing the street. Police say the driver did stop to help. The victim was taken to Bampsey in stable condition. Also new this morning, a Southside homeowner now without a shed after it went up in flames last night. Firefighters say it happened in the 11,000 block of Applewhite Road near South Zarzamora. When crews got there around 10.30 p.m., they found the shed on fire next to a trailer home. They were able to keep the fire contained to the shed and everyone in the home managed to get out safely. Arson investigators were called out to that scene. We're told the damage estimate is at about $9,000. A stunning development as we continue to follow the latest details involving coronavirus in and around Bear County this morning. 
The county has now reported more than 5,000 new cases, bringing the confirmed total of cases to 27,047, but that number not coming from a 24-hour period. Officials say most of the cases are the result of a two-week backlog from the state-run free testing sites. That backlog also brings our death toll to 229 with 21 new deaths, 10 of which are from nursing homes or assisted living facilities. And we begin the breakdown with the new cases from just yesterday, which is 691, 1,202 people are in the hospital, 430 are in the ICU, and 277 are on ventilators. 46% of ventilators are available, 12% of staffed hospital beds are also available. So now jump into that 5,000 new cases reported, 3,951 of those cases from the backlog. Mayor Ron Nierberg says this was the result of a kink in the communication process with the state, he says these cases were going into a separate filing system from the normal daily totals. However, the mayor assures us that the patients who tested positive were notified as usual. It's important to note that this backlog did not affect patient notification. All patients were notified within three to four days of their lab, of their lab results returning. But it did affect, in the case of the, the delay from the state, some of the contact tracing. 811 of the cases from last week when Metro Health officials were converting to a new digital system. These cases were not added to the daily total until yesterday. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf wants the Sheriff's Office to get tough with citations for violations of the Public Health Ordinance. He says the time to educate and give warnings is over as the surge of cases continues. The Sheriff's Office reporting that they have received more than 400 ordinance violation calls since mid-March. Of those calls, they found about 130 violations. About 60 of them were from businesses and nearly 70 were large gatherings. 12 citations have been issued to date. The sheriff says his deputies have also proactively visited more than 2,200 businesses to do random checks and to educate them on the requirements. He's now asking them to return to check for compliance. If by now you haven't heard or now you're not complying, now I think you're just being you're just being stubborn about it and you're putting lives in danger. If you hear there's somebody that's not wearing the face mask when they should, if you find a business not complying with this, please let the police department know or the sheriff's department. Uh, we've got to get our diligence uh, work out there to make sure these people are getting fines. The sheriff says deputies have not yet issued citations for failure to wear a mask. A citation could cost up to $1,000. You can call the non-emergency numbers for both the sheriff and San Antonio police to report an ordinance violation. And across the nation this morning, another new grim milestone in the fight against the coronavirus. The latest numbers showing uh, July has become the worst month yet for new cases, and we still have two weeks to go. ABC's Inez de la Quatera has details. Overnight, Florida seeing its worst day yet, 156 deaths in just the last day. Miami hospitals now 95% full. As an ICU nurse, uh, I beg you to take this virus seriously. And the mayor warning. If something is not done to dramatically alter our course, we could be in a, a more dire situation. Texas also seeing its deadliest day, the virus taking the life of Annalise Long, a 47-year-old mother of triplets. That was the hardest thing. It's a she, she gave it her all. And in Arizona, officials ordering refrigerated trucks as they run out of room in morgues. Deaths climbing in 27 states as nearly half the country either pauses or reverses reopening. The nation's top infectious disease expert telling Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg that the U.S. is a mixed bag right now with some areas doing better than others. Dr. Anthony Fauci also with a warning to younger people causing the spread. That you have to have responsibility for yourself that you're getting infected is not just you in a vacuum you're propagating a pandemic this as the debate over masks continues the governors of colorado and arkansas who both previously opposed statewide mask orders are now reversing course 
but Georgia's governor banning those efforts and now suing the mayor of Atlanta for requiring people in her city to wear masks. What the scientists are telling us is that the right thing to do is to wear a mask. I'll put our policies up against anyone's any day of the week. And now major retailers like Target, CVS and Walgreens are joining Walmart, Kroger's and Kohl's in requiring customers to wear face masks in all their stores. In Esdell Equitera, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, parents, students and teachers at Northside ISD and Northeast ISD now know what to expect for the upcoming fall semester. The districts have announced they will delay in-person classes and have distance learning instead. Northside will begin Monday, August 24th. School officials say there will be no in-person classes until at least after Labor Day on September 8th. Northeast ISD school year set for August 17th. School officials there are planning for distance learning for a minimum of the first three weeks of school. Both districts offering meal distributions and assistance with devices or internet access. And we want to help you by keeping you informed as much as possible when it comes to heading back to school. Right now on KSAT.com slash school, you can find tentative start dates for school districts in the San Antonio area, as well as other important information for parents. And we want to remind everyone this morning that Bear County is under a burn ban right now. The 90 day ban went into effect yesterday after several days of sun and no rain. It will remain in effect unless Commissioner's Court or the County Fire Marshal deems the safety hazard is there. If you live in the county, you can still burn trash and burn barrels. No other domestic burning is allowed. Violators could face a fine of up to $500. In your morning headlines, American Airlines and JetBlue joining forces to help deal with the dip in air travel amid the pandemic. Uh, under their new partnership, the airlines can now sell seats on each other's flights and share frequent flyer benefits. American, of course, much larger than JetBlue and is the world's largest airline. Scientists in California have discovered a new type of bacteria that eats metal. Microbiologists from the California Institute of Technology were doing unrelated experiments when they made that discovery. They left a glass jar covered with manganese and commonly a commonly found chemical element to seek in tap water. After a few months, the jar was coated with a dark material. Scientists believe this is the first bacteria to use manganese as an energy source. And NASA postponing the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope uh, because of the coronavirus and technical issues. The agency announced it's now targeting an October 31st, 2021 launch date. The telescope was previously scheduled to launch in March from French Guiana. NASA says Webb is designed to observe the infrared universe and explore every phase of cosmic history. Right now, it is 611, 78 degrees. And still ahead, bringing over the counter medication right to your doorstep. Details on that new partnership between Walgreens and DoorDash. Plus economy, death, just plain ignorance, birds, Re bird rescues are bursting at the seams. Up next, what you need to know before adopting a fine feathered friend. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is a nice 78 degrees. Enjoy this. This is a happy Friday and we're gonna have 90s. So I'm just really excited because I didn't see the triple digits. Not yet, at least. We're gonna check in with Mike in just a bit. Top three pets in the U.S. are dogs, cats, and fish. But did you know more than 20 million of us have a fine feathered friend at home? Exotic birds are the largest population of captive wildlife in America, so it's not surprising that birds have become one of the fastest growing groups of unwanted pets. Few animal shelters have the capacity or the knowledge to take care of them. But rescuers at a bird sanctuary in Florida, not far from Orlando, are working diligently to keep some of these birds alive. Max Massey has details. Small, big, beautiful, bald. Ellen Sherman has connected with thousands that have flown through her parrot rescue over the past 20 years. This is Maya. Maya's full of herself. She's. <laughs> right now, Ellen's caring for more than 200 parrots, cockatoos, and macaws. Gator came and believe it or not, more pluck than this. Big is over 65 years old. They didn't want her anymore because she didn't talk. Unicorn had her beak ripped out by a mating male. She's good. She, she learned how to eat. The traits that make parrots so intriguing are the same ones that make them extremely difficult to live with. 
First off, parrots are loud. They bite, they're messy, they're active, and those large ones that everyone loves, they can live up to 80 years. That's why when someone comes to adopt one, they go through a rigorous adoption process. She's feisty and lovable. Deborah Librant adopted her macaw just a few years ago. She's making sure that the bird's needs are taken care of. She think of it as having a two-year-old for life. If you think about all the needs of a toddler. Those constant demands keeps Ellen and her volunteer crew of eight very busy. Although they grow what they can, food costs can run up to $2,000 a month. And Ellen fears her rescue will get busier if the economy forces more people to give up their birds. But Ellen says as long as there's a need, she will find a way. When's the last time I've had a day off? 20-something years ago. <laughs> and Ellen wouldn't have it any other way. I for, oh yes. Another concern for Ellen, fake avian sanctuaries are popping up breeding warehouses full of exotic birds to sell over the internet and private individuals who pose as rescue just to turn and sell the birds. Ellen's Parrot Rescue and Sanctuary is a registered 501c3 nonprofit. She funds 75% of the cost herself Donations cover the last 25%. And during this pandemic, she has done all of the work herself. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 617. We had a couple of accidents out there earlier. How's it looking now? Yeah, it's looking real good, Stephanie. It looks like that accident on Green Mountain and North Loop 1604 East is cleared up now. Good news for everyone there. Still working on that accident here at Division, though. Uh, the one, this accident involving two vehicles down power lines. I know this has been a mess all morning, and I hope they can get it cleared up very shortly. All right, let's take a look at these drive times now. Nothing's changed that much. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to 90, still nine minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to 35, still 11 minutes. So really good times there. You got time for a pit stop, maybe put some gas. 10 at the rim, looking great. 281 and winding way, flowing smoothly. That's always good news. And uh, 1604 in Babcock on the northwest side, looking amazing right now. And Mike has some wildlife that has it made in the shade. Aww. Yes, indeed. What's the best way to look at this one? So look at the, look at that guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, and that oh yes. Face. Good pick. Nice. I know. And the caption. This was the same one yesterday, if you recall. Yes, I do recall. That was the do these. <laughs> and the caption was, "Do the spots make his rear end look big?" But uh, yeah, just in deep thought. <laughs> kind of a, a very soothing picture, you know, just looking at that little guy there. So thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. And we're starting off uh, about the same as the past couple of days. Maybe uh, just a hint less humidity. Not much, but, uh, you know, we'll take anything we can get. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 70s. And, well, actually, just as soon as I spoke in, in the past uh, couple of minutes, the dew point has gone back up to 74 degrees. So... Forget what I just said. Earlier in the morning, we had a hint less humidity, but the dew point has come back up in there. So we have a heat index right now of 82, 83 in Gonzales, and 81 is what it feels like in LaGrange. So heat indices right now are not just off the charts, which is, is nice. All right, out in the Gulf of Mexico, there is obviously some rain out there, and there is this weak disturbance, which is, this is one we've been looking at the past couple of days, which is continuing to slide to the west and it will move on shore and give us a couple of uh, showers in some of our eastern counties, especially obviously over there by Houston. You're going to be getting more of this rain, but it, it is encouraging to see that there will be some of these showers and this model actually brings a few. Well, trying to get a little bit further to the west, but 35 is almost the the hard cutoff for this and even getting in towards San Antonio is going to be very hard to do. There could be a stray shower that tries to work its way a little further to the west, but um, don't count on it, unfortunately. Now, tomorrow morning, some models do have another one of these showers trying to uh, pop up there along the coastal plain. So that's a, a, a chance, obviously. And, and even throughout the afternoon, if there is one along the coastal plain, yeah, consider yourself uh, fortunate with that. But again, this is not a huge or huge event as far as rain is concerned. But at least they're, like I've been saying, there will be a few of them off to the east today. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, wind out of the uh, south about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour throughout the day. And then 98 for high temperature today, uh, just a few degrees above normal. Normal high right now is 95 degrees. Of course, with the humidity, it's going to feel like it's in the, uh, the low hundreds and one or two of those showers off to the east. Tomorrow. I guess you can't rule out a shower or two um, over on the, the coastal plain. Same thing Sunday, but not great rain chances. We'll stay in the uh, mid upper 90s, actually not that far from normal. And then another disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico is going to try and work its way in here by the middle of next week. So again, a couple of showers are possible. Well, just what a blessing not to have 100 on the seven day forecast, right? Extremely now, excited about that. Yes. Now, of course, off in Rio Grande Valley, 
triple digits are almost a kind of a daily occurrence, but uh, yeah, for the rest of us, yeah. upper 90s. We'll hey. take that little break here. Right. 621, 79 degrees. And coming up next, why the U.S. and its closest allies are accusing Russian agents of trying to steal COVID-19 vaccine research. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Did you know the source of odor in your home could be all your soft surfaces? Odors get trapped in your home's fabrics and resurface over time. Febreze Fabric Refresher eliminates odors. Its water-based formula safely penetrates fabrics where odors hide. Spray it on your rugs, your curtains, your furniture, all over your home to make it part of your tidying up routine. Febreze Fabric Refresher. For an all-over freshness you'll love. The Dove Men Plus Care 3-in-1 Bar is unique. It can be used on the hands, body, and face. It cleanses and moisturizes with one quarter moisturizing cream, leaving your skin feeling comfortable and smooth. Dove Men Plus Care 3-in-1 Bar. For over 25 years, Home Instead has helped seniors stay home. Now, staying home isn't just staying in the place they love. It's staying safe. Home Instead. To us, it's personal. In this morning's GMA First Look, vaccine spy games. American, Canadian and British governments are accusing Russia of spying on vaccine researchers. They are accused of trying to steal intellectual property trade secrets. The NSA identifying the espionage group known as Cozy Bear as trying to hack pharmaceutical companies and other researchers working on a COVID vaccine. The group suspected of having ties to Russian intelligence was believed to be behind the hacking of the Democratic Party servers during the 2016 election, though the Kremlin did denies any involvement. Russia has ne neither the technological advancement, capacity or money to spend on developing vaccines. So they're looking to steal their way to first place. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on how the government is responding to this vaccine espionage. Plus, a closer look at where drug makers currently stand in the race to stop the coronavirus. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. DoorDash is expanding its delivery options with a new partnership with Walgreens. This will give the option to deliver over-the-counter meds and other products. And the service is starting in Chicago, Atlanta, and Denver before expanding to other U.S. markets. Facebook is now adding labels to posts about voting from federal officials and candidates. The label directs users to an official government website with voting information, and it will appear on posts regardless of whether they contain false statements. In honor of World Emoji Day today, Apple is previewing some new emojis. It includes a ninja, a boomerang, a pinata, and bubble tea. Also part of the latest edition, a set of lungs and heart, pinched fingers, which has been nicknamed the Italian hand. Also being included, the latest emoji list was announced uh, in January. A beta release for iOS users will be in September or October. Make sense? Yeah. Well, here locally, I guess we're going to be excited about the pinata sure. uh, uh, emoji. And for some, the ninja. And for, Yeah, exactly, the ninja. So my little girl is six years old, and, you know, we're still working on the whole, you know, reading and writing thing, but she sends me messages with, hi, mom, and then emoji, 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 emoji. Of course. Yes. <laughs> so I know it's from her when I have a bunch of pictures. That's adorable. Thanks, Mark. Time now, 627 and 79 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, living together happily. We'll tell you about a new study that says more people living together unmarried than married. Plus, a local researcher is seeking hundreds of coronavirus vaccine volunteers in our next half hour, the requirements that you need to know about. And Transguide, we'll check back in with Officer Nick Solis from the San Antonio Police Department. ring out when you look at the south side street what a mess all of this destruction here caused by a crash that police say may be related to street racing i'm katrina weber i'll tell you more about it hospitals across the country overwhelmed right now including right here in san antonio coming up what health officials are doing as the surge in cases continues 
and taking a look outside with live cam. Beautiful downtown San Antonio, 79 degrees. We are so lucky that we just passed those triple digits we were seeing earlier this week. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is July 17th. That's right. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Nick, how are we looking, sir? Oh, looking good right now. If you're on the way to work, you have time to put some gas. No accidents right now to report on the major highways and construction is minimal. Thank you for yes. the reminder on the gas. <laughs> <Got Yes. it. laughs> Especially early in the morning. Yes. yes. Except I'm disappointed because you usually say stop for food. Too. <laughs> I wanted to say that. Breakfast taco sounds really good right now. Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah, we do have still uh, plenty of humidity out there this morning. Our low clouds keeping temperatures up above normal. We're at 79 right now. 75 is the normal low temperature here in town. We've got 75 Stinson and Randolph and the humidity. Just when it was a couple of hours ago, we had a dew point down to 72. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but it was actually a bit more comfortable, but now it's back up to 74. So that's kind of fog up your glasses, sort of uh, humidity out there when you have dew points that high. And uh, we will keep dew points somewhat on the higher side throughout the afternoon. So even though temperatures, thermometers will stay closer to normal or below 100 at least. We're still going to have those heat index readings up there. Mold is on the low side this morning and uh, we've got obviously most, mostly cloudy, warm and humid, partly cloudy, 98 for a high temperature today. Yes, there will be a couple of showers off to the east. Don't get really excited about this, but at least there's that small chance for some rain over the weekend, partly cloudy, mid upper 90s. Something along the coastal plain as far as a shower it can't be ruled out. At least we're into that pattern where you could see a few sea breeze or coastal plain showers. And then next week, um, there's another little disturbance moving on in here, and that could actually give us a by middle of the week, a perhaps a slightly better chance for a shower or two. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So you said nothing on the major highways, right? No, nothing on the major highways, Mike. Things are looking good. Just that one accident or the two accidents we've had. That's it this morning. Other than that, Things have looked good all around the city. Construction is getting picked up. I know I saw maybe about as of 10 minutes ago, the final pieces of construction were getting picked up there at I-10 at the rim. So that should be cleared up now. A lot of green on the screen here and things are looking good. Now the one accident we have been working on all morning is this major accident on the 1020 block of Division Avenue involving two vehicles that are rolled over. For more uh, details on this accident, let's go live to Katrina Weber. Well, good morning. Uh, things are in a holding pattern here in the 1000 block of division. That's because of all the destruction that was caused. Right now, it's pretty much the CPS Energy Show. They have to get those power poles uh, off of the cars, power lines off the streets before anything can get cleaned up. This has been going on since about 4 o'clock this morning. Uh, we have quite a few CPS Energy workers out here. I, I don't think I've ever seen this many in one place outside of a construction project, but they're working very hard to get this uh, taken care of very quickly. Now again, this started with uh, two cars that police say were racing down the street. They ended up hitting two parked vehicles and then running into a utility pole, running into a second utility pole, hitting a tree, hitting the side of the house, causing all of this destruction here. The street has been closed ever since. Again, as uh, CPS Energy tries to address it because we understand that some of those lines were arcing when they first came down. It seems that they, they have addressed that situation, but they're trying to get the, the poles back in place and get the uh, lines back up so that they can also restore power, which was knocked out due to this wreck. Uh, again, police still looking for the drivers who caused all of this. They were in a pickup and, an, and a sedan that you see there wrecked out. Somehow, they both got out and they were able to take off, run away from the scene. A neighbor says she got out here within just a couple of minutes and they were already gone. Reporting live on the south side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Local researchers are now screening people for a COVID-19 vaccine trial. The trial will be accepting up to 600 people. It is taking place at Clinical Trials of Texas, which is located in the Medical Center area. You must be 18 years or older. For this trial, researchers say you should not have had COVID-19 before. Also, those who want to join but have underlying health conditions can still participate. Researchers are warning you that you could experience mild side effects. Pain at the injection site, maybe fevers, some redness to the skin around that area, muscle aches and pains, fatigue, they don't feel well for a couple of days. And generally that goes away. First responders and other frontline workers are especially encouraged to apply. Details on how to sign up are on our website at kset.com. The trial begins on July 27th. 
United States saw another single day record, according to Johns Hopkins University, when it comes to COVID-19 cases. But that's just one of the many problems health care officials are having to deal with right now. CNN's John Lawrence has the details. In San Antonio, refrigerated trailers being used as temporary morgues. That's because hospitals there are overwhelmed with COVID-19 victims. We go home and we cry. We're exhausted emotionally. Texas among the many states seeing a surge in hospitalizations after restrictions eased. Before we opened up, uh, we had eight people in the hospital. Now we have 800. Uh, we had uh, four ICU patients. Now we have 211. More than three dozen states are seeing a hike in week to week new cases, according to Johns Hopkins University. We thought we might have reached a plateau and now we're climbing a very steep mountain at a rate which is frightening to all of us. Meanwhile, President Trump remains focused on having students back in their schools this year. When he says open, he means open and full, kids being able to attend each and every day at their school. But multiple health experts say that's a recipe for failure unless Americans work together to curb the infection rate. If you open schools in communities where you have a lot of COVID spreading, you're going to have to slam them shut again. Look at what happened in Arizona, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida. You open too soon, it's one step forward and many steps backward. I'm John Lawrence reporting. U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is waiting to release new documentation on safely reopening schools. The CDC was supposed to release more reference documents by the end of the week, but a spokesperson says the information simply isn't ready. The new info will focus on how to reopen schools safely this fall. This comes after President Trump complained about the agency's current guidance. The Democratic National Convention has officially moved online. The DNC committee told members of Congress to cancel any travel plans for this year's convention. The event was slated to take place the week of August 17th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In a statement, the committee said the convention, including the voting period, will instead take place remotely. They also stated delegates and elected leaders should all plan to conduct their official business virtually. Western governments accusing Russia of trying to steal coronavirus vaccine information. They've issued an unusually detailed warning aimed at publicly calling out the Kremlin and putting scientists and medical companies on notice about suspicious behavior. The U.S., U.K. and Canada allege the hacking group APT29 is attacking their research. The group also known as Cozy Bear was blamed for election interference here in the U.S. four years ago. A 16-year-old boy is dead after investigators say he and a group of other teens were playing with a gun. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, Moses Reyes was rushed to a nearby hospital after he was shot in the chest at a home off Lands Pond. While the exact cause of the shooting remains under investigation, Sheriff Javier Salazar says it's being treated as a homicide. Neighbors say, though, something needs to change. We educate our children at a young age about a lot of dangerous things. But it's not for them. They do not need to be playing with weapons. The city and the county provide free gun locks to gun owners who want them. Those programs were launched back in January. It's still not clear at this time how the teens got a hold of that gun. Just about 640, 79 degrees. A new study shows more couples are living together unmarried. Up next, what you and your significant other need to be prepared for. May sound surprising, but more people are living together unmarried than married. The latest Pew Research study found 59% of adults ages 18 to 44 have lived unmarried with a partner. 50% of all adults have never been married. However, this arrangement can make navigating legal and financial matters complicated. As Sarah Costa reports, being prepared is important for you and your significant other. More and more people are opting to live happily ever after, but without the marriage certificate. But experts say that doesn't mean you should opt out of all paperwork, that you should have some type of domestic partnership agreement. Let me bind you uh, what your obligations are going to be legally, financially, as well as for your kids. Assets such as the house and car should be listed as joint tenants with rights of survivorship. If something happens to one of you, the other will automatically inherit the property, even if the will says otherwise. Another asset to take care of, your bank account. It's called payable on death or, or transfer on death, where you can add that person that you want to get your assets if something happens to you. 
Next, have a health care and financial power of attorney. You can go ahead and pay his or her bills. You can help them make medical decisions when they can't speak for themselves. Finally, be sure to designate your partner as a beneficiary on your 401k, IRA, and your life insurance policy. These take precedence over your will. And when it comes to dealing with financial and legal decisions, make sure you talk to your attorneys to make sure everything is in order. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. If you have a tattoo, proudly show it off. That's because today is National Tattoo Day, July 17th, set aside to recognize the history, culture, and the artist dedicated etching ink permanently into the skin. A fun fact, if you could call that, the word tattoo derives from the Polynesian word tatao, which means to tap or to mark. If you have one, today is the day to show it off. Well, think about everything you can say with more than 1,800 emojis we do have. Today is World Emoji Day. Wow, I didn't realize that, that many. I know. <laughs> the expressive icon started as emoticons. Now, remember the sideways smiley face made up of a colon and closing parentheses? Well, a Japanese man turned them into pictures in 1990 for teens to use on their pagers. Mm. They were, there was, um, they were unknown to the West until Apple included an emoji keyboard in the iPhone. It was meant for the Japanese market, but users in the U.S. quickly discovered it, and the emoji boom began. The rest is history. Yeah, I know sometimes I'll text somebody and they'll just respond with just an emoji. Right. <laughs> so what, what Does we that, do is that frustrating? No, I'm, no, no, I'm used to it by now. What about you? Do you mind emojis? I don't, I don't mind them at all. I think some people find them not, lazy is too strong a word. No, I mean. But it's that, become our lifestyle, right? It's, it's sometimes they are appropriate. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. <laughs> like, uh, like hearting my mom when she texts and she's like, yeah, I love you too. Yeah, I guess she wants more. <laughs> well, yeah, for that, <laughs> she deserves more. I'm saying, so I'm the lazy one. You text oh your mother goodness. and don't call her? <laughs> I do call her every Thursday. Aww. That's a good son right there, Mark. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen here. Not dealing with too much out there. So we have just this major accident we've been dealing with all day. The, the 1000 block of Division Avenue. Still working on that scene with down power line and uh, two overturned vehicles there. Um, let's, so just keep that in mind if you are heading that way. Time save your traffic. Uh, drive times. Here we go. 10 westbound from the northwest side at 35 to 1604, 11 minutes. And if you're on 10 eastbound from the northwest side at 1604 to 35, 13 minutes. That's still really good times there. All right, Trans Guy, I wanted to show you all something here. It looks like the construction is still blocking off this exit on 1604 eastbound from Bandera. The exit to Hausman and Kyle Still is blocked off there still. So if you are heading that way, uh, you're going to have to exit Bandera uh, Road to get onto Hausman Road from eastbound 1604 because they still have that exit blocked off. I don't know where the sarcasm comes from, but one of our people on our crew just sent me a text with like 53 different <laughs> emojis. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> but the other, one, the other one is using or different, you know, words, uh, you know, or, or letters, you know. Um, not following. <laughs> that, that look like pictures? Well, no, not that look like gifts, pictures. But gifts. Yeah, gifts oh, and or, okay. or just, you know, when people use certain letters and spelling out a sentence or a word like that. Like you talking about T like slang if somebody, shorthand? If somebody says T-Y. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, I got right. it. You're talking about my son for it. It's like, no, thank you or something. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, and yeah. I will always reply to my sons in the affirmative with a Y. And they go, what do you mean why? I go, no, it's a yes. <laughs> no, that means why. I said, what's negative? And I said, well, then the opposite of that is why, yes. Uh, see, <laughs> Who's and, on and first? You're deal, and you're dealing with teenagers, not toddlers. <laughs> and they're like, we're just trying to help you, Dad. So. <laughs> <laughs> why, yeah, L right. And I say that. I go, L left, R right. Yeah, but Y means well. And then anyway, anyway. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Call Hi. your mother. Hi. Uh, this beautiful shot there, Milky Way Galaxy seen in the uh, the southern sky. And yeah, if you're away from city lights, I mean, you don't usually see this. And, and uh, as uh, Roger pointed out, it's not necessarily visible with the naked eye, but a nice uh, powerful camera or a uh, telescope. But great picture of the Milky Way Galaxy and all that is just a zillions and zillions of stars out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. A lot of clouds hanging around this morning and temperatures obviously are warm. It is humid. We're mid to upper 70s, dew points 
We were doing okay about three, four o'clock this morning, and then we started to see these 74s and 75s come back into the picture. So yeah, it's pretty humid when you step outside. So a little bit of a heat index. We will see heat index readings up into the low hundreds today, even though temperatures are going to be down just in the upper 90s. All right, there is some rain out there in the Gulf of Mexico. That's the uh, disturbance we've been watching the past couple of days, which will continue to work its way on inland and produce a few showers, obviously primarily in our uh, eastern counties. And this is kind of a broad brush. There are going to be very few and far between 20% chance of rain at best, and that'll be the situation uh, throughout the afternoon. Maybe again, a couple of them, but if you're, I even think San Antonio west of there, forget about any rain today, unfortunately. But as we go into next week, or even on the weekend, maybe a coastal shower here or there, but next week there may be a slightly better chance for uh, a couple of showers around the area. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And again, a couple of those showers off in some of our eastern counties later on today. 98 for a high temperature. Of course, heat index is still going to be into the low hundreds. We keep enough humidity around throughout the forecast, but temperatures will stay in the 90s. And again, you can't rule out a, a, a stray sea breeze, coastal shower here or there. But then by the middle of next week, another one of those little disturbances is going to try and move on in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So. Mm, perhaps a little bit better chance for a shower middle of next week. I say with question in my voice. <laughs> so, we couldn't tell. So just remember, why means yes. Why means, means yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Mike, for the update. <laughs> why? Why not? Six. Wow, this is a rabbit hole. 650, 79 degrees. And studies show that kids living in poverty are more likely to drop out of school. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about a woman who has made it her life goal to help kids succeed. Outside with Live Cam, it's already near the top of the hour. Time flies when you're having fun. You're watching GMSA. The news you need to know before you go is coming up. There are some big losses from a street race here on the city south side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Those losses, also known as damage, here in the 1000 block of Division Avenue, caused by the drivers of those two vehicles that you see against the tree. Police say they were drag racing, or street racing rather, when they lost control, hit a couple of vehicles, took out some power poles, hit a tree and a house. The drivers were able to get out and run away. Right now, CPS Energy trying to put things back together. Reporting here live on the South Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Delivering meals and spreading happiness to her students. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Coming up later on GMSA at 9, I'll introduce you to a teacher of the year and how she is going above and beyond. Right now it's about 5 till 7. And we had a couple of accidents earlier. How's it looking now, Nick Solis? Trans guide wise, <coughs> it's looking great all around the city. Uh, just got an accident that came out here, though. Southbound, looks like southbound, uh, southwest loop 410 at Old Pearsall Road. Keep that in mind if you are heading that direction. Little minimal details on this accident. Mike? Thank you, sir. And we've got a lot of, well, there's our... Humid, hazy weather hanging around here this morning. Still at 79 degrees, 77 Port SA, and some mid 70s in parts of the hill country. And the humidity, yeah, you step outside. It was okay a couple hours ago, but it uh, it's kind of wet towel humidity when you step outside. 90 at noon, 98 for a high temperature today. One or two of those showers off to the east. Don't get really excited about rain chances, unfortunately. And then to over the weekend, a coastal shower is possible. Otherwise, uh, we'll stay about mid 90s and right around 97 throughout much of next week. And perhaps another little disturbance comes in here from the Gulf by the middle of next week. Plans this weekend, guys? Uh, I think we may drive down to the coast on Sunday. Fantastic, yeah. Nick. Little landscape in the front yard. Nice. Ooh. Good luck you? with that. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Definitely, yeah. Mark. Definitely. Mark? Plans? No. None inside yeah. hibernation. Inside. You <laughs> some hibernation, but we're we're gonna go bike riding We've in the morning. Get out in the some way, right? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Have a great weekend, guys. Absolutely. We we'll see you back here in a couple hours for GMSA at nine. Good morning, America is next.